on this final reflection on Christmas Eve, there is a, a sense of anticipation and expectation and not panic, I hope. And whatever you choose to do or not to do, Christmas Day is coming. And in all our preparations, if food and gifts and cards and the like, ultimately it's the preparation of our hearts that is most needed at this time. Perhaps we watch those Christmas films and we long for those times of snow and beautifully decorated homes, laughter and singing, no arguments and no burnt roast potatoes. We have very high expectations, often unrealistic ones, of what the day should be like. But may I suggest a couple of things that set our hearts a little bit more ready, a little bit more in preparedness, if you like, for the celebration of Christmas Day, of the Saviour coming. Maybe it's about taking some time to reflect and give thanks today or tomorrow or, or just at some point, spending time thanking God for all that he has done. And I know it's been a difficult year and there's lots of emotions surrounding that, but there are things to be thankful to God for. Secondly, I'd often say, of course, Spend time with those that you love. But of course, we cannot do that as easily this year. Um, we have to stick to those bubbles to make sure that we are safe. And although we cannot gather that way, we can still talk to one another, see one another through technology, through FaceTime, through Zoom, uh, or whatever it is you use. But most important, make sure you take time to talk. Don't rush. Just talk and listen. Uh, thirdly, what about singing? Why not sing out loud? Here in church, we haven't been able to sing because of the regulations, but actually there's nothing that stops us singing inside our homes. And as silly as it might seem at first, it could be a lot of fun, but it also helps us to pay attention to the words of those timeless carols. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. Now, although there perhaps is an idealistic view of childbirth, particularly at that time. There's still a recognition that God came to earth as a baby. Fourthly, celebrate. Celebrate Jesus, the one who holds all things together, the one who chose to enter the world here in the humblest form as that of a baby. Jesus' birth is the greatest gift any of us will ever receive, and we thank God for that. To listen. We need to listen to truly listen to one another as we gather with our family and our friends, whether that be over the phone or in person. Listening is one of the best ways to show how much we love somebody. And of course, to enjoy. Christmas is a wonderful time of the year. For many, there's that sense of sparkling Christmas lights, decorations, uh, memorable moments. But for others, of course, it's a difficult time. So that leads us on to prayer, to pray for those who, for whom this Christmas time doesn't matter how much they prepare, that things will not be how they'd hoped. We pray for the hurt, for the lost and for the searching. And we ask God to open our eyes and their eyes to opportunities of God around us. So as we prepare in these last few minutes, these last few hours before Christmas morning dawns, I hope and pray that you will once again hear the song of the angels. Lift up your eyes to see the King of heaven who draws close. Have a great Christmas. Bless you.